Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to be showing off the best box fighting tips in Chapter 2 Season 6. We're currently about two weeks into the new season, everyone's making their way up to Champions League. It's basically the perfect time to drop some banger tips and tricks to help you win more box fights. Just a heads up though, not all of these tricks are new to Season 6. A ton of them are techniques that I have shown in other videos, but due to the fact that the pump is back, as well as the overall new shotgun meta, I'm going to show them again. So don't worry, I still have a bunch of new tricks up my sleeve that will definitely take your opponents off guard. Without further ado though, let's get right on into it. Up first are a ton of ways to utilize the newest and most broken fish in the game, the cuttlefish. In case you guys forgot what the cuttlefish are, this is what they look like. They are really, really ugly, but they also used to be really, really broken. And the reason for that was prior to this update, Epic actually took them out of arena for a week. And that was because if you threw a bunch of them on top of your opponents one by one and then shot it with a pump shotgun, it would destroy their one by one and kill them inside. It would do like 300 damage. Now it does none. Kazaki lives another day. At the time I'm making this video, they have returned to normal matches to arena. You guys can see I have them. And there's a bunch of other tricks you can do with them. One that I saw from Martos is you just throw it at your opponent's wall. You stand about a unit away. Make sure you're not too close so you don't take any damage. You're just gonna shoot it, replace their wall. <laughs> Another cool trick that I learned from Ryu Zanami is you could basically use these like you would an RPG. So you're gonna throw one cuttlefish, two if you want, on the other side of the top of your opponent's one by one. You're gonna shoot them. Don't take damage like I did, but that's gonna exploit you into your opponent's box. My favorite way, also from Ryu Zanami, is to set it up exactly like you did before. You're on top of their one by one, and instead of exploiting into their box, jumping inside, which is not the smartest idea if they have a primal shotgun, you're gonna shoot and replace the top, get some peace control. <laughs> <laughs> and then kill your opponent. From your opponent's POV, all they're gonna hear is the sound of the cuttlefish being thrown, which is not that loud. There's also really nothing you can do against it because your opponent's just gonna take everything. It goes through turbo build. There is quite literally no counter outside of just running away. Last thing about the cuttlefish, which I kind of did show, the amount of damage they do while on your opponent's wall all depends on the gun you shoot it with. You just saw that did 70, but then when I shoot it with a pump shotgun, it does 76. So it depends a lot on what you shoot it with. It also depends on how many you throw at your opponent's wall. Two is gonna do way more damage than one. Easy clap. Just know the cuttlefish are still really, really good. The reek clip that I showed before where you throw two cuttlefish and it will kill your opponent instantly, that does not work anymore. That's kind of a good thing. So yeah, that is cuttlefish after the update. Trick number two is a really useful way to get more damage out of your makeshift shotgun. Just like the cuttlefish, the makeshift shotgun was changed after the update. As you can see in the bottom right, there's now three bullets per clip. It's a big step up from two previously. So now you get three bullets. On top of that, they changed how the crafting works for it, as well as kind of every other makeshift weapon. You can see in the crafting section, in order to get to blue rarity, it still takes four mechanical parts. However, if I go to the white one, it only takes two to get up to green and then for the blue rarity which i unfortunately do not have that's how you're going to craft into the purple pump it now takes six mechanical parts so it takes more the final two changes to the makeshift which are really important is that the fire rate really got buffed you can see i'm shooting all the bullets ridiculously fast so this is the makeshift as fast as i can let me show it against the wall one two three and then if i have a purple pump one two Three. It's so much slower. The makeshift shoots fast as heck now. Why this is useful is because in box fights, not only can you shoot really fast now, but it's pullout time and time to shoot after you edit was decreased. Take this man's wall, make an edit, shoot again. Look how quick that was. Obviously a good opponent is not just gonna stand there, but come on. It's fire rate and pullout time is so much better. It actually makes the makeshift kind of viable. Oh my gosh. Oh, and this actually reminds me. If you spam shoot, which is the fastest way to shoot the makeshift, you can actually get an extra shot off as you reload. So you'll see I'm going to be out of ammo and reloading. And boom, if I just spam shoot, I can get a shot. <laughs> stop, stop, please. <laughs> I can get a fourth shot off really quickly. I'm reloading. I shoot again. 
The reload time hasn't been changed. It's always been pretty darn quick. But with the pullout time and the fact that it shoots so quick now, you basically have an extra fourth shot if you just spam click. Where are you? I have a makeshift. <laughs> All in all, I really cannot call it the make shit anymore. It's actually kind of decent. Just make sure you guys really utilize its fast fire rate. It's much lower pullout time. Don't be afraid to pick it up. Third strategy, this time from Reddit user Razor Sharp Lemon, is Vadil's favorite way to exploit into boxes. Basically how this works, I think he dubbed it the zero gravity phase, is as you jump up, you're gonna pickaxe your opponent's floor and fall straight through it. Let me show an example where I don't phase through. You see how I go like halfway down? What? You notice how I go like halfway down and then I come right back up? That's because the phasing is not working. My toe is not getting through and then phasing the rest of my body like it usually does if it works. So that time it worked. The key to be consistent is you wanna pickaxe on the way down. Like if you do it too early, you're not even gonna pickaxe. And then if you do it too late, Nothing's gonna happen. So full speed, this man is on zero ping, remember. I'm gonna jump up on the way down I pickaxe, get right through, easy, easy, easy. From your opponent's POV, they're gonna see you trying to get in. They're not really gonna think it's a phasing exploit because why would you just randomly jump up and try to get in? I am too big. I was holding the entire time and he still got through. And I know a lot of people are gonna say, why the heck would I ever use that? That's not useful in actual games. I mean, not only does Vadil use it a ton, let me get in, but it's also one of the only phasing exploits from the top that does not involve you just cramming yourself under a cone or having to do a weird crouch exploit like that. Those obviously still work and they're still useful, but trust me, this is gonna be the one that throws your opponent off guard and makes them wonder, does he watch Papa Jarian? Of course you do. Fourth trick, one of the throwbacks, is how to effectively counter the Primal Shotgun during box fights. Although the Primal Shotgun was nerfed this patch, they made it so its fire rate was decreased. It doesn't really seem like it was. I guess it shoots like a fourth of a second slower or something. It's still so broken. Oh my. The absolute worst thing you can do when you're fighting someone who has a Primal Shotgun, <laughs> oh god, is try to take their wall by just standing in front of it. Even if you have counter piece control like I do here, you you have a bunch of different ways to run outside your box. You never want to be one muted away because <laughs> no matter what, the person with the primal is just going to run at you. That's basically the most effective way to use the primal shotgun. There's really only three ways to counter the primal. One is have a primal yourself. You have to be crazier than the person inside who's already crazy enough to have a primal shotgun. Second way is to box fight from an entire unit away, which is really kind of hard if you don't have good ping. Oh, there we go. <laughs> My favorite way, however, and what I think is the most effective is to do what Arkham does, which is build one wall to the side, the left side of your opponent's box, build a ramp. You can establish some counter piece control as well. The important thing is that you're on a ramp next to your opponent's box, and all you're gonna do steal their wall, peace control them diagonally, and no matter what this guy tries to do, you have a way to get around him. He pretty much has no angle on me right now. Even if he tries to run out and peace control me like a madman, I have an escape route. Here it is again at full speed. I'm gonna approach from the side. I'm gonna wait. I'll put a cone there. Try to take it. Get the cone in. Oh my gosh, he even tried to piece me up, but it did not work. Therefore, if you want a way to counter primal shotguns, that is the way to do it in box fights. On the topic of primal shotguns, our next tip is how to counter people trying to counter you. It is the counter to the counter. Like I said before, the best way to use the primal is to edit out onto your opponent and destroy them like I just did to Kazaki. It pretty much works every time. You don't even really need to build. You just want to catch them off guard either when your opponent is going to pickaxe your wall or as they take it and are editing themselves. You want to play like a brain dead idiot who just knows how to run and shoot. I have an extra trick for that. The way this technique works is you basically want to make your opponent think you're taking a nice right hand peek angle that you have a pump shotgun when in fact you're really just gonna re-edit it and run out on them like an absolute maniac. So full speed it would look something like this. 
<laughs> you want to use your movement to your advantage. Run left, cut back right as you finish the next edit, and run out. And reminder, you can do this for a bunch of different edits. You could do a nice little window edit to piece them up, then edit this like that. You could do window edit on the right side, and then a right side arch. You could do so many different things. The whole point of it is that you're throwing off your opponent with the initial edit. They're gonna think that you're gonna jump up here like a normal pump player. You watch Papa Jarian, and you're a primal maniac who re-edits the wall and runs at them 100 miles per hour. Let's say we are fighting in game. I'm trying to take his wall. I'm trying to play it smart. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Pretend I am in a real game box fight. I'm gonna use my trick. Look, I'm playing so smart. I'm really doing my best here. I see him make the top corner edit. And hey, look, he's gonna jump up here, right? <laughs> <laughs> nope, he comes out the complete other way right in front of me. That is how to outsmart your opponents with the primal. Who would have thought it actually takes skill, am I right? The next tip is going to show off how broken the stinkfish is. The other new fish in chapter 2 season 6, they are the stinkfish, which are somehow uglier than the cuttlefish. They be looking like Zexro. Now what they do, it's pretty simple. You can either consume them for 20 HP. That actually makes them better than a flopper because they drop in sacks of 3. And 3 of them is 60 HP. One flopper is only 40. That's kind of crazy. Anyways, the other way to use them is to throw them at your opponent and it becomes a stink bomb that does white HP. Kazaki is just tanking it. I don't even know if he's there. <laughs> the way that you can utilize stinkfish in box fights is you can essentially zone your opponent. So what I mean by that is just like you would with a stink bow, if I throw this fish on the right side of his box, he's gonna have to come on the left side, which I can piece up. Oh, Let's pretend he has full HP. I'm just gonna zone him to whatever side I want. For example, if I throw it on the top right side, it's gonna come out on the left side. Boom. Same thing can be done if I were to throw it at the bottom. I could just piece up the top, or he comes out the back, I piece that up. There's so many different ways to zone your opponent with these stinkfish. Same with the stink bow, like I said before. Here's a clip of Destiny using it in game. Go check him out. He showed me this trick. I love him. Yeah! Techniques 7 and 8 are two amazing ways to make use of bows that don't really require you to hit your shot. The first of the two bow strategies you probably saw from Martos is basically you use the bow to break your opponent's wall. You can see they don't do too much damage, so you want to make sure the wall is really low. And then you're going to use it to replace it like I just showed. The amount of damage you do depends a lot on the bow's rarity. What did that do? 43. It also depends on how much you have the bow cocked back. So 43 again, I would have to pick- Oh god, oh god, no, 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 no! This man is like a caged beast. You give him one opportunity, and he kills you. The fact that you're not using your pickaxe or your weapon to break the wall. Well, I mean, a bow is technically a weapon. You guys know what I mean. It makes it a lot easier to actually take the wall even if you're on high ping. Because the arrow shoots so much slower. Right now I have two ping. Kazaki has about the same. I'm gonna get the wall low. I watch Papa Jarian. Boom. Look at that. He's still trying to hold the wall. Poor guy. He didn't realize. The bow wall replace is absolutely busted. Then the other bow trick I want to show off has to do with the shockwave. Mechanical shockwave bow. I know it's not in arena, which is kind of why I waited until the end to show it. The way you craft it is with a mechanical. You're going to craft it to the blue mechanical bow. And then with your shockwave grenades, craft it into this bad boy. It literally shoots shockwaves on top of doing damage. 89. <laughs> That man went flying. There's actually a few different tricks with it. I'm putting them all together and I'm only counting them as one trick. So the first one is that if you get the wall low and you shoot into it, the arrow is going to go through it and it's going to use the shockwave and catapult your opponent all the way out. This means I could be really far away. I can just be spraying at the wall. Boom, I go to shockwave Bowen. He comes out and I get a free shot. A free kill if he's low enough. You could also just use it to grief the heck out of them because that is hilarious. If any of you guys are thinking, wait, does that mean I can just use it like a normal shockwave? Of course it does. You could do any of the exploit tricks, go right into your opponent's box. I'll leave him one HP because I'm evil like that. You could go in from the top. Oh, pretend I exploited in. Bang! You could use this mechanical shockwave bow just like you would a normal shockwave. I actually heard that you could apparently get the mechanical shockwave bow if you go behind retail. One of the people over there sells it if you get lucky. So I guess it's technically an arena for now. You can't get it any other way. This thing along with the normal bow has so much outplay potential and I highly recommend utilizing them. Show yourself. 
Uh -huh. Tenth and final tip, straight from Ryu's Inami, is how to box fight with animals that you tame. I showed all you guys how to tame these animals in my last, or I guess my first tips and tricks video on the new season. No, I need that meat. All you have to do is kill one wolf, one boar, like I just did. I now have two pieces of meat and six animal bones. What I'm gonna do is with the meat, I'm gonna craft it into the hunter's- Oh gosh, get out- No, 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 chill. Bro, get- Yo, get away! Like I said, though, I'm gonna craft this into the hunter's cloak. All you need are three animal bones, one piece of meat, and when I put on the hunter's cloak, now the wolf will let me tame it. Look at that. The trick that Ryu Zanami showed is you can use tamed animals to help you in box fights. I can use it to replace the wall. There we go. Little wall replace. <laughs> My boy just destroyed Kazaki. I'm gonna name him Cletus. Cletus, come over here. He's gonna phase me in. Ready? Let's go! <laughs> That is not a box fight with an animal. A literal pet wolf named Cletus. My boy goes ham. Cletus, I reward you with some meat. Cletus, take the meat. You gotta be hungry. There you go. Good boy. No. No. Why? He killed Cletus. No. No. Wait. Who the heck is this guy? Overall, guys, those are the most useful box fighting tricks in Chapter 2 Season 6. So if you enjoyed the video or you learned something new, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel somewhere down here, and to turn on my post notifications. Shout out to everyone on the screen for using code Jarian. I appreciate each and every one of you so, so much. I'm gonna start posting again on my second channel. Go check it out, at more Jarian. We're almost at 100k subscribers, so please go subscribe. Otherwise, that's it for me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later.